Good afternoon. No, not yet. Hold on. So listen. So last time, and then we start. There's 30 cows on the field. 28 chickens. How many did not? Two. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Campaign Grind. I am Pedro Diaz, I am your host, and this is The Campaign Grind. We are here with our good friend and co-host, Mr. Ray Valdez. What's going on, man? With my new hairdo. With his new hairdo, he actually wants to, to kind of copy copy the slick, cool-looking cap. Taking some years off. Some years off. He actually shaved his beard, he shaved his head, so it's all good. Um, I think we're gonna have to like change the name from Diaz campaigns or campaign grind to two two bald dudes and campaigns or talking politics or something like that. But um, welcome back, guys! Thank you guys very much for tuning into this week's episode of the Campaign Grind. Um, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give us a call uh, at one eight 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 six eight eight Diaz. Once again, one eight 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 six eight eight Diaz. Uh, shoot me an email, pedro at diazcampaigns.com, pedro at diazcampaigns.com. We are doing a Facebook Live, and Facebook, you guys are, are here live. Uh, you guys have any questions, just comment here on Facebook Live, and, and I'll be more than happy to, to answer them for you. Um, but if this is your first time tuning into the campaign grind, I appreciate the love, I appreciate the support. I guarantee that you guys are going to find some useful information uh, on these episodes. If you know, you're the first time tuning in, make sure you go back and check out the other episodes of the campaign grind. I guarantee you're going to find useful information. If you're an avid listener, you're an avid, uh, uh, you're, at, you're tuning in all the time to the campaign grind, thank you guys very much. Once again, I appreciate the love and I appreciate the support. Today's episode, I actually want to talk to you guys about uh, canvassing uh, strategies and tips. Um, we get this question all the time. A lot of people think that canvassing is just knocking on on a whole bunch of doors, you know. Um, but that's not the case. Yes, you do got to knock on doors. You do got to talk to voters. You do got to present your message. But you really got to make sure that you're targeting the right audience. Um, a lot of candidates say, "Well, I'm going to canvass my entire district. I'm going to canvass my entire uh, city." Um, which is great, but the thing is that you want to make sure you're hitting the right people that are going to be coming out to vote in your election. For example, there are a lot of voters, there are a lot of voters, no matter which municipality you're running in or which state you're running in, there are a lot of voters that just come out to vote for presidential elections and don't come out to vote in gubernatorial races or much less municipal elections. So you want to make sure you're targeting the right audience once you're canvassing and you're knocking on these doors so you don't waste any precious time knocking on somebody's door that's not going to come out to vote in your election. So I'm going to be basically breaking down some, some strategies, some tips, and some tricks that can kind of help you and your campaign uh, basically run a more effective and aggressive uh, canvassing campaign for your campaign. So before we get started, Ray, you got something to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to say, you know, uh, what you mentioned regarding uh, this podcast and all the other podcasts that you have done before. You got to talk is, louder. That'll it is good. very important that uh, that if you're planning or you're a candidate, that uh, you know, take a look at some of these podcasts because all these recommendations, all these advice, come from uh, the many, many campaigns Diaz campaigns has carried out. Yes, and these are all tried out strategies. already strategies that have been proven yeah. to be successful to work. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you have an idea. And then you say, well, you know, I'm going to have to spend my money doing this or that, or you're going to hire some people to go knocking on doors with you or whichever, etc., etc. Many things, printing, whatever. Check the Diaz podcast or get Pedro. The Campaign Paul. Grind podcast. Yeah, or, 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 or <coughs> call Pedro and, and check with him because this is very important. All that interaction, you know, give you a definite, you save money and you're going to save time, the least. Correct. You know, when you uh, are focusing on your campaign and you have an idea to do something, you say, well, should I do that or should I do this? Or, you know, sometimes radio doesn't work as good as, you know, door hangers or this. Give Pedro a call. 
1-888-688 Diaz. I'll put it down here uh, on the video. 1-888-688 Diaz. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, we do offer free 15-minute uh, campaign assessment consultation. So you got my ears and our staff's ears for 15 minutes, absolutely free. 1-888-688 Diaz. Um, but I don't want to continue plugging this in. I really want to talk to you guys about the canvassing strategies and tips that we currently use, um, that we've used in the past, and we currently use right now for for our candidates. Um, so once again, you got to make sure that your targeting is on point. You want to make sure that you're knocking on doors on voters that are going to be coming out to vote in your election. Just because you have 500,000 or 50,000 or 5,000 registered voters in your area does not necessarily mean that those 5,000 or 500,000 are going to be coming out to vote. So you want to make sure that you do a very good job in determining and targeting the voters that are going to be coming out in this particular election. Once again, write this, write this down. There are a lot of voters that come out to vote in presidential elections that do not come out to vote in gubernatorial races, much less municipal elections. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do your targeting right and you're targeting the right audience so you don't waste any time knocking on doors that of these voters that aren't going to come out to vote in your, in your election. The other thing you want to do is set goals. okay? And this is something that, that's going to have to work with your, your canvassing app. So basically, you want to set goals of X amount of supports, X amount of undecideds, X amount of negatives, and how many uh, uh, left literatures you've done per day. And try to push yourself. Try to figure out exactly how many houses you guys need to hit per day in order to get the right amount of, uh, or touch the right amount of voters you need before the election. And you always want to make sure that you hit these voters several times before election day. For instance, one of the things that we do, or the way that we do it, is the first canvassing list we do is always absentee ballots. The second canvassing list that we do is all quality voters, which includes absentee ballots, and basically the absentee ballot voters are getting hit twice. Then the third list is all those people again. So we try to hit these actual voters three to four times prior to election day, and then one extra time uh, for the absentee ballot voters, because at the end of the day, as many of you guys know, if you're watching this episode or you're watching this, this, this episode of the Campaign Grind, absentee ballots is really, especially here in Miami-Dade County, what wins and dominates these elections. And uh, I know that Pedro doesn't like me to say this very many times, but I say call Diaz campaigns because you talk to Pedro. I'll send and you the check. Everybody thinks that, no, because, you know, I have had that experience and I failed. I didn't get elected, you know. Yeah. And uh, that, that I worked two years on my campaign and I did a lot of different things that I did wrong. First, I used to knock on every door. And I, then I found out, really, I didn't need to do that. Yeah. So I wasted a lot of time. And let me tell you another thing is, every election is different. People say, election, oh, I'm going to run, I'm going to be a candidate, I'm going to run, I'm going to go in that election. Well, there is a primary election, there is a midterm election, there is a, a presidential election, there's all kinds of different, and they all different. Yeah. And you have to approach it from a different, with a different strategy, from a different point of view, with different materials, and focus on a very timely basis for all these things because you don't want to waste, you know, your money doing something off time. You know, maybe you should be doing that two months from now, and you're trying to do it today. And three months from now, nobody's going to remember that you did that. Right. So, you know, it's very important, your time, the timely strategy, you know, and I'll shut up. No, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, once again, guys, just make sure that your strategy's on, on, on point, your targeting's on point, you want to make sure you hit the right people. Don't, you know, knock on somebody's door. It's not going to come out to vote in your election. You don't want to waste your time with that. Um, another question I get asked a lot, especially um, if once you're qualifying as a candidate, um, a lot of candidates, they like, in theory, to qualify by petition. Um, I love qualifying by petition uh, for our candidates. The reason why is because we're kind of creating and cultivating a, a, a whole different base, okay, that basically, uh, if you target them right, they're going to be your base all the way up until Election Day. Um, so, for instance, you know, um, what we do is, depending on the resources the campaign has, um, they don't have a lot of resources, guess what? You, the candidate, are going to have to do the majority of this work. So, for instance, what we like to do is basically, um, if you're, if you're going to be canvassing and collecting petitions, you obviously have enough time before election to gather those petitions, okay? So we like to plan out the, the, the canvassing and basically um, determine these non-traditional voters, okay? So, for instance, let's use round numbers. 
um, 5,000 registered voters in your area, okay? Out of those 5,000, 3,000 are quality voters, meaning those are the, the 3,000 that are going to come out to vote in your municipal election. For sure. And that, yeah, for sure. And then that leaves 2,000 that only vote for presidential elections or gubernatorial races, uh, but they're, you're not going to count on them. So what we'd like to do is really analyze those 2,000 that nobody's going to be going after and try to figure out 500 or 1,000 of those that we could kind of motivate them and get them to come out and vote for X, Y, and Z candidates. Um, so what we like to do is get, like I said, 500 of those or 1,000 of those that we believe we can motivate and put them on our canvassing list and hit those people up to sign the candidate's petition, okay? So once you get the, the necessary petitions, whether it's 500 or 1,000 or I don't know how many petitions you're, you're going to need, or even if you could qualify by petition, but if you can, I urge you to do it and use this strategy. Go after those non-traditional voters that nobody's going to touch. Now, if you go after them, you're going to be the only candidate touching them, asking them for a favor to sign your petition. And I guarantee, once they receive their absentee ballot or once election day comes around, they're going to, you're going to be the only candidate that he or she remembers because you're the only one that knocked on the door and took the time to talk to them. Mm -hmm. So once you're done gathering those petitions, then you want to make sure that they're all verified. You qualify by petition. Great. But then you got to start analyzing how you're going to tackle the next obstacle, which is touching uh, those quality voters that are going to come out to vote. So you already got two pockets. You got your quality voters that everybody's going to go after, and then you got your non-traditional voters that signed your petitions that you were the only one that really touched them, talked to them, and they you're really the only candidate they know. So you have these two pockets you're going to be going after. So you want to make sure that you do your due diligence, knock on their doors, give them a call, send them mailers, send them emails, send them Facebook messages, so on and so forth. Be in front of them. Most importantly, you really want to be in front of these, the ones that are the non-traditional voters, because once again, you're going to be the only one going after them. And come election day, come absentee ballots, once they get in the mail, they're going to remember you, the candidate, were the only one that took time out of your day to go and talk to them. So true. Uh, I, I'm gonna uh, mention something very special, but you, you, you actually, you know, are being very specific on this. Uh, when you go after those voters to sign your petition, and those who sign for you to qualify by petition, those people are committed. committed. They are committed to you. Yeah. So that's very important. I I uh, I couldn't do that work because you know I needed I don't know like fifteen hundred. Uh, uh, petitions. petitions to to qualify by petition and or I don't 15 or 1800 and I gave it up so but uh, the fact is if you do have the manpower if you have your team you have your strategy and you can go and get the, a start early enough to uh, get qualified by petition I know some of our uh, best uh, 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 US uh, representative here centers like uh, Eliana Ross, Eliana Ross let me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, years ago, I used to go to her father's house, Enrique Ross, and sit there, and we used to email, I mean, to mail out envelopes for the petition. Yeah. Put a scene inside, mail it out in the district, and she qualified by petition many times. Yeah. So, and she was there like, I don't know, 30 some years. Absolutely. Uh, as a U.S. representative. So, you know, qualifying by petition. Make sure too that all those people are committed to you, are committed to your campaign. They know you because when they sign your their name to your petition, that's yes, yours. That's yours. Done. That's yours. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So once again, remember, you got your quality voters that everybody's going to go after and you're going to target in your campaign, but then you got to create your own little pocket here of these non-traditional voters. These are the people that everybody's overlooking. So you want to make sure that these are the ones that go off and sign your petition. The reason why? Because those are the low-hanging fruits. You're the only one touching them. And once again, once they get their absentee ballot, once election day comes into place, then you're the only candidate they're going to remember because you're the only candidate that took the time to talk to them. Now, I know we've been talking a lot about canvassing and different tips and, and tricks, uh, qualifying by petitions, which is a lot of walking, a lot of, a lot of actual labor that you, the candidate, got to do. Um, and we've dealt Very with candidates, important. yeah, we, we've dealt with candidates, you know, from, from young candidates to older candidates. Um, but now this is a geared a little more towards the older candidates that, that you know, can't walk as, as much as, as a younger candidate can. Um, because either one, they're older, or two, physically, they just can't for any reason. Um, so, 
what you can do if you physically cannot walk for a long time. Okay, and what I like to do is basically break it down into, into a couple of, well, a few different uh, points. Uh, number one is basically have others walk with you or for you. Um, you're going to need some cash in order to do that. So if you don't have cash, completely forget about this because people are not going to work for free. And the ones that are going to work for free, they're volunteers. You know, friends and family, they're great, you know, to a certain extent. Me personally, I don't like hiring friends and family for campaigns because you can't get upset at them if they don't show up on time. You can't get upset at them if they don't meet their weekly or daily walking goals. So I really like uh, hiring people because we, we can basically get upset at them, tell them what we need and what we expect from them. Um, so if you have no money, by, by all means, forget about this point, hiring people. You're going to have to do most of these things yourself. Well, friends um, and relatives. Friends and relatives can help you. Like I said, to a certain extent, they got their lives to worry about too. Uh, they got work to deal with. They got their everyday lives they got to deal with as well. So you can't expect too much from them, but they will help. I, by all means, when I ran, all I had was really friends and family, and, and you know I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, but you know, given the experience that we have now, um, yes, we love when candidates have friends and family to help them out for an early voting on election day. But when we need people to make phone calls, when we need people to canvas on the weekends or even during the week, you know, I much rather prefer hiring people. The reason why is because every your friends and family, they got their own lives to worry about. You know, these people that we're paying, this is their job. They this is what it. exactly they got to do it. So if you have no money, you know, you're, this is something else you're gonna have to do yourself. But if you do have some cash, make sure you hire canvassers, make sure you hire phone bankers to make these calls and knock on these doors and collect these petitions on your behalf. What you want to do is make sure that they are bilingual, especially if you're running in a in a in a bilingual town or trilingual, if they're trilingual town, uh, Creole, English, Spanish, what whatever language it is, you want to make sure that your canvassers and your phone bankers and the people collecting your petitions uh, can speak those languages. Um, the other thing is, you know, you can't canvas. Okay, great, but your fingers still work, and you you got a, a mobile phone, or you got your phone at home. Make calls. Call the voters personally. What you can do very easy is call these voters personally. Hi, my name is Pedro. I'm running for X, Y, and Z seat in city of Miami, Miami-Dade County, the state of Florida. Whatever you're running for, call them personally. Once you get off the phone with that particular voter, <clears throat> give your canvassers a call, give your phone bankers a call, have them do that little follow up or call your relative to see if they can knock on that extra door if this person needs some extra, extra convincing. So make sure you make these calls yourself. I cannot stress this enough. A lot of candidates, they think that I'm a candidate, you know, I'm bigger than this. I don't need to walk. I don't need to canvas. I don't need to make phone calls. That is the worst. And, by, and I'm going to tell you guys right now because we have turned down a lot of candidates that are like that. We do not like those candidates. We do not work with those candidates. At the end of the day, the candidate is the brand. You know, we could do 100% of our job, but if the candidate does not walk, does not make the phone calls, does not raise cash. They got to be willing to work hard. They, they it's got, hard work. It and is. If you're planning to be a candidate, you better be ready. Correct. To do a lot of work. Absolutely. And I just want to mention something, and you're touching in those spaces. I don't know if this is a space to do this, but you know, don't ignore the millennials, don't ignore the young voters, the yeah. new voters, because you know, in the in the in the last ten years, especially, I think that the newer, the younger generation are more active politically, activism, and uh, voting, and everything else. Absolutely, that, you know, many people didn't do used to do before. Absolutely, and uh, there's been you know the last. 10, 12 years, and uh, you know the uh, the new voters, the younger generation, they are you know right on there. It is very important. Very Absolutely, important. that Absolutely. can make the difference. So you know you got to call the voters yourself. Make sure that they know who you are. Um, you can't walk for such a long period of time. Make those calls or hire people. The other thing you could do is, like I said, have somebody drive you. Have one of these workers drive you. Have a volunteer drive you. Whatever the case may be. Um, the other thing is that you really, I know that you're going to be limited because you can't canvas, you can't be on your feet for too long or whatever the case may be, but you want to make sure that you take that time and at least hit and touch those undecided voters. I want to say, I have two or three very good friends, and one of them has uh, unfortunately had some trouble with his uh, elected position and so on, but I've had two or three very good friends who have worked very diligently who worked very hard in their campaigns for mayors, for for uh, uh, commissioners, and so on, and they were in the wheelchair. So don't let, if you're handicapped, don't let that stop you from yep. being a candidate, because you may be the best candidate, and maybe you're what the community is looking for. Maybe, you know, you do the work, 
that someone that can be more agile and get up there and do a lot of door knocking this and that and you come around and people are going to appreciate that absolutely because you took that time even though you're in a wheelchair even though you're on crutches even though you have a cane whatever the case may be people see that they like that you took the time whatever circumstances you had you you went through them and you knocked on the door you spoke to them and, and you had that one-on-one -on -one communication with them and people remember that i guarantee it alex our friend alex mm -hmm. that you know and in his last election he broke a foot he never stopped incredible yeah he, he never through. stopped during his campaign to go out there every day and hit those uh, you uh, have to voters doors and and talk to people absolutely you know? so you know like I said, you're limited in canvassing because you're, you're, you can't be on your feet for too long. Just determine who your quality voters are, who your supporters are, the undecideds and the negatives. And, but what you want to really make sure of is you touch those undecided voters at least once. So like that, they know exactly who you are. Even, like I said, if you can't be on your feet for too long, whatever the case may be, just make that effort. Talk to those undecided voters. Do what you can to get in front of them as much as possible. And the final thing is basically email and text message. So you want to make sure that you're able to email these voters, text message these voters directly from your personal cell phone. Even if you don't got a campaign line, you don't have a campaign uh, email, just email them directly uh, or Facebook message them directly. Just try to get in front of them somehow so like that they know exactly who you are. What you want to make sure is that basically you have a constant uh, 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 strategy of touching these voters. Whether you're mailing them, you're calling them, you're texting them, you're Facebooking them, you're emailing them, um, or you're even calling them personally. So you want to make sure you have that constant touch. And the more times you pass your hand through those voters, the more times you touch those voters, the more and more they're going to remember you once they get their absentee ballot and once they have to go to election day and vote. you have anything to add? This is the Miami skyline. That's the Miami skyline, I know. But um, so guys, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call 1-888-688-DIAZ, 1-888-688-DIAZ, or shoot me an email, pedro at diazcampaigns.com, pedro at diazcampaigns.com. Um, as always, this episode was brought to you by electionmarketplace.com. For all of your campaign needs, check out electionmarketplace.com. We actually got a cool little uh, uh, spin the wheel uh, type of giveaway thing on the website. So visit electionmarketplace.com. All you gotta do is put your email, click spin the wheel, and you could get like free printing, free designs, uh, a whole bunch of like percentages off, up to like 15 or 25 percent off. Pins, they can get no, pins. We, yeah, we don't have pins there yet, but okay. check out check out election marketplace. Spin the wheel, see what you guys win. Um, electionmarketplace.com. As always, um, if you have any questions, give us a call 1-888-688-DIAZ. Uh, shoot me an email, pageyourideascampaigns.com. you have anything else to add? Are you going to have the t-shirts and the shirts by Iris? Well, well yeah, we're going to have some pretty cool shirts. Um, and we'll actually put a link there so you can check them out on Amazon. Actually pretty cool long sleeve shirts, uh, campaign grind shirts. We also have campaigner shirts. Uh, we got some pretty cool stuff for all you campaigners out there. Um, but check this pin out. Um, it's a campaign grind pin. I know last episode I showed it to, to you guys. Ray was wearing it. Um, these are very selective. We're, we're very selective to whom we give these out to. These are really for our candidates, the candidates that are really out there hustling, grinding, and uh, not grinding, but basically are in the campaign grind. Yeah. So, um, guys, if you don't have anything else to add, Mr. Ray Valdez, uh, I want to thank you guys very much for tuning into this week's episode of the campaign grind. Until next time, I am Pedro Diaz, signing out. Mm -hmm.